You're going to school, you're studying speech pathology, mm -hmm. and you're taking your... Neuroscience and audiology courses, so I'm kind of getting the, like, academia view of the perception of sound and how, like, we process things auditorily, and then obviously you have a lot of practical experience. Oh, you're going to have to teach me all this stuff. I'm going to have to learn. A few of my professors have seen your videos, and they were all like, oh, this is all really cool. So you got Huge the... Huge dad points. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got um, literal PhD people being like, oh, this is cool. That's amazing. That, now, that's huge. I've been putting a lot of thought into sound for a change. Oh, huh. I did a video about thinking outside the box mm -hmm. as far as why stereo sound systems struggle to reproduce accurate sound. Why stereos don't sound real. Mm -hmm. And it has to do with the fact that sounds in the natural environment are separate energy sources, whether mm -hmm. it's a Marshall guitar rig or an acoustic guitar player, stand-up mm -hmm. bass or a trumpet. It's an energy source. There's energy, there's sound energy radiating from this thing from a certain mm -hmm. unique physical point in space. And when we listen to that, if we walk into a room with a band rehearsing or an orchestra or just a bunch of people talking, all these sounds are coming yeah. from different directions reflecting off And of that's what our ears are going to be like tuned with just in everyday life, right? Because that's how the real world works. And then speakers try and radiate all hmm. the sound in one direction mm -hmm. and make exactly the same sound go exactly in one way. So you've taken these things that radiate all the kinds of weird sounds in all different directions mm -hmm. and then put them into something. We strive to make sure this speaker puts exactly the same sound. Mm -hmm. Kind of the parallel is imagine a field full of sprinklers. Like a bunch, of a bunch of sprinklers over here. And some of them are going tick, 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 tick. And some of them are going shh. And some are going Phew. And you're looking at that. Maybe you walk up to them. Maybe you walk through them. And then we want to recreate that sprinkler field for someone to experience later. Well, the way that a sound system, a, sp a stereo system, or Dolby Atmos or surround mm -hmm. sound does it, is they mount a bunch of shower heads yeah. on the wall. And they have all the energy coming from certain points. Yeah. Maybe they take all those sprinklers and they take one shower head on the wall and they try and put everything in that shower head. How mm -hmm. well is that going to recreate mm -hmm. these water droplets coming from all these directions yeah. by radiating all the water droplets from two directions or even yeah. from around? It's just, yeah. A, yeah. you can't recreate a sprinkler, sprinkler field with shower heads. Yeah. I, or yeah, yeah, it's a, a, the sprinkler field is an interesting <laughs> metaphor, but I get what you're saying. Okay, so I kept kind of going down that path. And what I realized, sleeping, I like to sleep on this stuff, is everything that we see, not everything we see, the bulk of what we see, our main interest in things that we see, is the reflection yeah. of light yeah. off of physical things. Mm -hmm. Which then we get into the reflection of sound also, right? We're concerned with not running into this when we're walking. So we're concerned about illuminating this with light mm -hmm. and the reflection. We spend our lives looking at the way that light reflects off of physical objects. We don't spend much of our time staring at the light itself, mm -hmm. unless we're going out looking at Christmas mm -hmm. lights, sitting around a campfire, or watching fireworks. Yeah. Or a rock show. You know, and those we, are very specific. There we're things. looking at the actual energy sources, mm -hmm. but pretty much our life is spent looking at the reflection of energy off of physical items. Yeah. With sound, the information with light is provided oh, off by the reflection. Yeah. The information with the sound, sound is, is provided, provided by, by the, the energy yeah. source yeah. itself. Yeah. That's a completely different paradigm. Mm -hmm. It's the light isn't providing the information. The mm -hmm. light is illuminating the objects that yeah. give us the information. Whereas sound, a musical instrument is providing the information directly. Sound and light, if we look at them from the same perspective and we say the light is providing the information, like, for example, a computer monitor or a television. Mm. Now, a television or video screen the light source, the energy source, is providing the information that we're interested in, yeah. and it's unified. And that's not too different than wa watching somebody play acoustic guitar or talking to somebody. We're interested mm -hmm. in the energy source. We're focused on it. With the bulk of light, we're not. So yeah. I think that that was just one yeah. perspective I thought was helpful. Yeah. Well, I think it ends up being really interesting, right? Because, you know, we, we think about frequencies across the range and our eyes can pick up certain frequencies that becomes light, our ears can pick up certain frequencies that become sound, et cetera, et cetera, right? Mm -hmm. And it's this very interesting like philosophical thing to engage in in terms of how are these things the same because they're, we're interacting with the same sources over differing body receptors maybe, and how are they different? 
because they end up being, you know, in terms of us focusing on the energy source of the guitar versus the reflection of the light. It's, that makes sense? Yeah. And what if we were to listen to sound in the realm that we look, look at, at light? light? Yeah. Then basically we wouldn't be interested in mm. the actual acoustic guitar, what someone's saying. We'd be interested in the way mm. the acoustic guitar bounces yeah. around the room and the way the energy source reflects off of all of the surfaces in the room. And that would be our primary focus. Yeah. The actual energy source would not be of relevance And usually to us. within sound world, you're trying very specifically to not play around with the reflections we get padding and we get these sound we spend a lot of time eliminating that because it 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 distracts us from the source and it's hard to yeah yeah and then that kind of brings us full circle to the beginning which or what it started is that speakers don't sound real ish perhaps what if we are underestimating the importance of the sound (laughs) reflection of the environment yeah, so with light, all, almost all we're concerned with is the way it reflects off the surfaces, and there's an mm-hmm. energy source. With sound, there's an energy source, and yeah. we ignore the reflections. And I wonder... What if we raise the parameter? Now, there are processors that add artificial reflections, and but that's kind of cheesy. It's the... Well, and I wonder if there's this element, too, where if we're looking at two speaker sources and trying to make those two, or even ten, whatever surround sound, whatever, make those sound natural, like everything is coming from a million different sources. And that is an impossible task, but creating the environment where there becomes these reflections that bounce off, well, now all of a sudden we have all of these reflections creating more sources. And maybe that's the thing that can make it more... And I think we're seeing some of that like with sound bars where a sound bar has energy coming from here, Mm, energy mm -hmm. coming from here, and then there's phase alignment to bounce energy off Mm -hmm. or create the illusion that's coming. So, I mean, they are trying to recreate these various sources or reflect things off of walls. And it it was just something that I found. Yeah. And the sprinkler versus shower head, maybe flashlight versus campfire, like a campfire, Mm. is everybody gathered around an energy source and everybody's got a different perspective on that energy source, and it sounds and feels and radiates heat differently to all the people around it. And now we are, if we make change that into speakers and the sound source, we would take a flashlight and try and recreate that energy source. And the, like a home stereo or PA speaker shoots light or sound in one direction. Yeah. So trying to recreate the feeling of a campfire by using flashlights Mm -hmm. and ignoring some of the aspects below, like we hear 20 to 20K, well, we see a certain range of light, but we feel the warmth of the campfire. Yeah, so we're ignoring this completely other element in terms of, yeah, what we're feeling because the the flashlight's not going to give you that heat. And the ultraviolet light is above what we see and heat is below what we see, Mm -hmm. but we can feel those things, they affect our bodies. Yet sound, we relegate, okay, we only need 20 to 20K, but there's pops from that fireplace that we can feel and hear or speaker. So not ignoring those to enhance the experience. Yeah, yeah. And then the last thing I wanted to mention (laughs) is that I was thinking about it further is like almost all gatherings of people are people hovering around energy sources. I was thinking about the campfire and I was thinking about a rock show. I was thinking about everything that when a bunch of people get together, Hmm. all we... And then I say, well, shit, everything's that way. Everything, Surfing, you're yeah. going looking for an energy source. And the water Snowboarding, the energy so then source. I realized that was just silly. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think it is, because like I think that I think that it is in terms of everything is it's it is this everything because it's everything, right? Mm-hmm. But I think, especially when we're thinking about sight, sound, sensation, all of these things, and breaking them up and apart into these specific sensations and forgetting that it is that just energy that goes along that maybe our bodies have specifically evolved for specific reasons, right? Of picking up and adapting, hearing, sight, feeling, all of these things. We have these specific sensation receptors to pick up that information. And it's like, we're breaking it apart, but what about putting, I don't know, I I'm I kind of lost myself there, <laughs> but it's that we're breaking it up and we can forget that it is all of that same baseline. Oh, yeah, it's unified. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're super sensitive to 20 to 20, 20 mm-hmm. to 20K, not very sensitive to anything until we get up to light, 
And then we're not, sen- you know, it's so we've got these two frequency mm-hmm. ranges, but then we're also sensitive to the physical motion, which is zero hertz to yeah. 20 hertz. So we've got zero hertz up to 20K, um, but then we can, you know, we did that 40K test where you and can then- kind of hear standing on the back of your neck. So we are able to hear inner sense. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, the kind of the concept of at the high, at high enough level, all energy mm-hmm. will be felt by us. Perceptible, yeah. Or energy can kill you. Yes. yes. All energies can kill you. All energies can impact you. Physical energy, well, radio then, frequency. There's no energy that can't wipe us mess out. Mess you up. Yeah, in the right level. And then also just thinking about all of the different like animals who that have created these different sensory receptors, right? Right, right, right. Because thinking about animals in terms of their different sensory receptors, and we talk about whales then they can hear these levels of frequencies or like these lower ones and then it just kind of gets into well what is hearing versus these like different sensory things like pulling these things apart because i mean what does that even sound like it's like well it doesn't really matter because that's what their brains and their evolution has made useful for them yeah we're attentive to the things that are important speech for our ears that's why we've developed in these soundscapes that we have is because that is the frequencies in which we can, our vocal cords can resonate and our speech sounds, t- k- p- all of these things that we are able to do to create speech. Those are the things that our ears have also evolved in. That's in interesting. Way. Yeah. So, so yeah, the, our hearing range is directly correlated to the sounds we that make. we can create. Yeah. Which then there's that really fun fact about how cats have made their noises, I think, higher frequency when they became domesticated so that humans could hear them because their normal noises are not noises that we can hear. Higher or lower? I think it's higher. I think, I think, yeah, I think it's higher. I think it's higher. Wow, that's it interesting. It might be lower. It, they change their frequencies on one thing. The cats themselves, they can hear a different set of frequencies than we can hear. But so they they've use changed, our realm. They've changed it to communicate oh, with wow. us, which is incredible. Yeah, the range that we can hear. And it's directly correlated. And so then that influences instruments, right? And the things that yeah, we, we build make. them in the round because we're not going to make something that we can't hear to make music because music is something we can hear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or and feel I, maybe. But, and then you know. so that leads us to yeah, we could probably make things to extend that if we work on it, mm-hmm. or maybe we have the ability to hear things above and below. Mm-hmm. We're just not used to paying attention to it, like when we did that forty k test. But then would we call it hearing still? That would be my question. Or is yeah. it something else? You know, I think that um, my guess is that they can kind of measure brain waves and make sound yeah. and see what your ears picking up. Yeah. And whatever your ears are like. And I wonder if it's st- to. stimulating the cochlea, right? Because that's kind of the thing that we end up defining as hearing is can it stimulate the cochlea? Mm-hmm. If it's resonating here and you can't hear it, then it's not stimulating the cochlea, which right. is send those neural signals. So maybe it's something else. Maybe it's stimulating the brain in a different way. I don't know. I'm not a neuroscientist. I was thinking of the 40K video. I was at the swimming pool, a swimming pool the other day and trying to scrape off some uh, algae Mm -hmm. from the drain. And in order to do, I had to reach my hand in the water and dip my head in and the pool pump was running. And when I put my forehead in, I didn't hear it. And as as I went farther, as soon as the top of my head went in, I could Mm. hear this. You could hear the water rushing. And you pull it out and then up to my forehead, I couldn't hear it. So you know how we, in the back of my brain, on the back of our heads, right at that bone there, we've got sensitivity, but there's another one right on the top that um, is sensitive. And it's really easy to check out that by dipping different parts of your head into water, ocean, that's making noise. And then that's like the bone conduction, right? Bone conduction thing. But it's, is that hearing? Or is it something we just sense because it's not coming in my ears or maybe or it is. Or is it? I because don't know. because then you have bone conduction and mm-hmm. bone anchored hearing aids and you have all of these things and it is sending those sound waves that it's picking up through the bone and stimulating the cochlea. So it is still hearing. Ah, very cool. So it could be that this resonates at a certain way, it is stimulating the cochlea Ooh. and then it's hearing, but it's because your skull is vibrating or something like that. But when we did the test with 40k we felt it. We didn't hear it. And it's above what our cochlea mm-hmm. can perceive. Mm-hmm. Is that hearing? Or was it just Something making else. R- resonating and recreating a lower frequency we could feel? But I didn't really hear it. All I, I didn't did really felt hear it. Cringe. But maybe the, it's not stimulating the cochlea. Maybe it's just messing with our Straight brain in a certain brain ways. Waves, yeah. Our brain. And maybe that's not hearing. All right, Sam. Thank you. And yeah, energy sources yeah. versus ener- energy reflections. How we live our lives 
I think listening it's really... to energy sources and viewing energy reflections as our primary focus and secondary to hearing is the energy reflections and mm -hmm. secondary to seeing, seeing is, is looking the energy at the sources. energy sources. So they're flipped over. Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting thing to think about. Cool. Thanks, Thank Dad. you. All right, Sam. Great to see you. You as well. Yeah. <laughs>